Let's talk to Daniel Miller, and he's the um, president of Texas Nationalist Movement. I'm glad he's the president of the movement and not announcing himself the president. You don't have any guys in bass boats, do you, announcing themselves as admirals? No, we, we don't have anybody uh, that are announcing themselves as admirals, but I would uh, guess that we probably have quite a few bass boats amongst our membership. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, well, listen, I mean, I've seen you on TV. I think you're a great guy and, you know, articulate and, and well-spoken instead of guys spitting tobacco announcing that the president, you're supposed to kneel to them. Total insanity. Tell us what's going on. Tell us about your movement. Well, Alex, you know, we are we are the Texas Nationalist Movement, and we're dedicated to securing and preserving the cultural, political, and economic independence of Texas. And, you know, for anyone who's been listening to your program any length of time whatsoever, they're going to understand exactly why it is that Texas wants to stand up on its own. If we're going to preserve those things that made the Constitution great, that made, uh, you know, the United States of America great, then this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to establish Texas as a bastion of freedom and independence and then work our way out from there. Well, if secession was done as limited for reentry into the real union when it was reestablished, that would be better. Bill of Rights, Constitution, arrest the governor, arrest the bankers, you know, not let them run it. And then we got our own oil. We've got everything from swamps to pine woods to prairie to farmland to mountains. This this. This, you know, Texas is what as big as France, uh, what uh, the eighth biggest economy in the world. California is the seventh, and it's about to totally implode. I agree. If we're not going to fall to the parasites like California, uh, if it was done right, it would be a good thing. But so, 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 tell us about your plan. Tell us about your idea. Tell us about your group. Well, you know, let me let me address something that you just that you just mentioned because I think. That is, you know, for, for folks like us that have engaged in the protection of the Constitution for years now, uh, you know, that's that's a legitimate concern. You know, what happens if, you know, we get to the other side of this independence and we wind up with the, the same old Uncle Sam Jr. in the driver's seat? And that is entirely dependent upon the, the people. You know, Article One, Section 2 of the Texas Constitution says that all political power is inherent in the people. I mean, that's a sentiment that was echoed in the Declaration of Independence. It is a foundational principle, uh, both that uh, led the 13 colonies to secede from Great Britain, led Texas to secede from Mexico, and it's, you know, part of the contract between Texas and the rest of the states when Texas entered the Union. So this, this concept of all political power being inherent in the people is not just some kind of dusty old principle. It really is a call to action for all of those people out there that believe in the principles of freedom and rights to get involved. And the only thing that is going to prevent this, this march toward globalism is for people that listen to your program, people that listen to other programs, people that believe in these principles of freedom and independence to stand up and take action. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and the group itself. Sure. We are, the, we are the largest and the oldest organization dedicated to Texas independence and the principles of freedom. Uh, you know, we have been engaged in this debate uh, for a very long time. And beyond that, you know, in the more recent examples, uh, we were very active in working on getting HCR 50 passed, which is the sovereignty resolution here in Texas. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, that thing needed a lot more teeth than it really had. But, you know, given that we're having to spoon feed a lot of these guys in the legislature, uh, it was definitely an accomplishment. Yeah, for those that don't know, uh, uh, the Texas did pass the resolution saying we're not under federal control, and the states created the feds. Yeah, and, it, you know, it basically just were, it, it was a reminder, you know, which I guess is, is the best that we could hope for out of some of these guys in the legislature, seeing as how, you know, they were more fixated on trying to get toll roads passed than anything else. Uh, but but it was it was a step in the right direction so that we have some sort of measuring stick to hold these guys accountable to. Because at the point that the federal government oversteps its constitutional authority, which guaranteed it's done uh, many, many times since the House passed that resolution, uh, then the legislators are all of a sudden on the hook. Hey, did you pass it and not mean it? I mean, was it just pillow talk? And that's, in essence, what, uh, what the, the whole crux of HCR 50 was. Well, that and would be an amazing... Exactly. That would be an amazing message for the globalists, because there is no you know, federal republic anymore, is to have Texas and a few other states break off, and then that would really get everybody's attention that, hey, 
the feds are illegitimate. They're out of control. Can you imagine how great Texas would be with a 100-mile-an-hour speed limit, cut the government down to almost nothing. All the business would move in here. It would, it, oh, you know, open in Vermont, uh, Second Amendment, you know, open carry. Just, I mean, just, oh, I'd love it. Absolutely. Really? I mean, I want Wild West, libertarian all the way. This place, I mean, it would, it would just be awesome. Well, Alex, let me let me throw this at you because I think this is important for you to understand uh, about what this means and for all the listeners out there. Is this means for the first time ever that people here in Texas have a say in how they are governed. You know, we have we have dealt with you know people are concerned about global encroachment in, in the United States government, folks. It's here. I mean, it's it's here. We're already uh, conquered. That's a fact. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, I mean, if we're going to get are, the country back, we got to admit we are totally controlled by offshore banks. Go ahead. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about it. I mean, anyone who thinks that the globalists are going to take over the United States needs to wake up and realize that it's been done. You know, the United States, the bankers, the globalists. I mean, the, the United States is the muscle for these guys, and, and this is this is really kind of the, the big issue that we have. And as Texans, we have to make a determination: is that something that we want to to stand for? Or do we want to go off on our own path? You know, when the Titanic is sinking, deck furniture sliding off the deck, and you've got a good lifeboat over here that, uh, you know, honestly has got a speedboat given the statistics for Texas and its economic viability. Uh, do, do you want to sit down and, and argue about the color of the drapes in the ballroom of the Titanic, or do you want to get the heck off the ship? Well, my only concern is the media will put a bunch of lunatics and camo waving guns around with gold crowns on their heads. I mean, just total white trash ne'er do wells. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And then say that's who we are. How would? How are you going to try to differentiate? Well, you know, Alex, it's it's by doing things exactly like this. You know, talking on talking on your program because I know I know you are not that. You know, I know that that's not what you are, and I know that your listeners are not that. And I know that by and large, there are a lot of people out there that are. You know, they are professionals, I can tell by looking at our membership. You know, from all socioeconomic groups, from all various political backgrounds, you know, these guys understand that Texas independence is the best thing for Texas. So, you know, when they want to, when the media, the spin doctors up there in the federal city decide that they want to uh, paint us with a brush as extremists, then what we do is we reinforce that we are, we are engaging in the, in the peaceful political process. You well, know, I it, tell you, I mean, you've seen the polls they're from 60 to 30 percent, depending on how it's asked, want to secede. And my point is that the republic's already gone. Texas has no choice. And, and, and in a way, it'd be better if a good group like yours did it instead of the globalists breaking us off as part of Mexico uh, and, and a part of Aslan and the La Reconquista. Stay there, sir. We'll also give folks your website on the other side of this quick break as well. Finally in the news this evening, it's being reported that cyber spies from Russia and China have now penetrated our power grid. Even as energy experts are reporting that each summer we get closer and closer to the limits of our nation's power grid, some say that this summer's demand for electrical power may finally push the grid over its edge, creating a cascade of power outages across the country, putting us all in the dark. Are you prepared for the next round of storm-related outages or government-created blackouts? Have you ever thought about taking steps to get off the grid and generate your own private supply of electrical power? If so, this will be the most important information you have ever heard. Solar power generators are finally available. They have no moving parts to wear out or break and require absolutely no gas whatsoever. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun. So go to MySolarBackup.com That's MySolarBackup.com Check out MySolarBackup.com before you lose your power. <laughs> 